Our second session, however, is opened by a remarkable man, a uh, superbly gifted maxillofacial surgeon who spent many years as a regular volunteer on board the Mercy Ships in West Africa. For those of you unfamiliar with that particular charity, Mercy Ship operates the largest non-governmental hospital ship in the world, providing free surgery and medical care, community development projects, and offering training, materials, and hands-on assistance. Uh, this speaker volunteers as a thyroid and maxillofacial surgeon, offering free life-saving and life-transforming surgeon for as many people as they can at any given time. To talk about offshore medicine, please welcome, because I believe we all think we're absolutely fine to go, ladies and gentlemen, we'll talk about offshore medicine, please welcome Leo Cheng. Start the game. <laughs> Millions of people are suffering from diseases that can easily be cured if they can have access to modern health care. That means they have poor health outcomes, even death from treatable diseases. What is the enemy? The enemy is poverty. That means you earn less than one or two US dollar per day. This happened in West Africa, along the 800 miles coastline where the slave ship used to land. Some of these countries went through years of civil war. Anything that can be broken was broken. And some of this country is still maintaining peace because of the United Nations peacekeepers. And you can see here, the bomb out buildings. No sanitation, no water, no electricity, and there are 200 families living in it. There are over 7,000 people are queuing. I thought only British people like queuing. 7,000 people are queuing. Are they, what are they queuing for? Are they queuing for water? Are they queuing for food? Or maybe they just want to elect their favorite politician. No. They all have serious health problems that we don't see in the Western world. Let me introduce some of them to you. Goiter, enlarged thyroid glands. Now, I can't see many Derbyshire neck here, but if you let me remove your normal thyroid gland, your thyroid gland is at the bottom of the neck, in the front of the neck. You can hardly feel it. Do you know how heavy is your normal thyroid gland? It's about 20 grams. The lady that I've just shown you, she had one kilogram of thyroid gland. Now, she couldn't move her neck, nearly choke her, but that is just physical. But the voodoo doctors in her village said, you've got evil spirit in your neck. She told me some of her friends with large neck swelling was jabbed by hot poker by the voodoo doctor. If we can go back to the picture, I thought when I saw her, she had got some dermatological skin conditions. Oh no. It's a handiwork of the voodoo doctor. The voodoo doctor said, I want to release the evil spirit slowly. So I'm going to scratch it two or three times a day and rub, rub some black tar into it without anesthetic. Do it every day for two months. Leave her with unsightly scars. How about this fellow? Benign jaw tumor. Benign means it's not cancer. It's, it's soon kill him, should it? Oh yes, it will. Because it, what you can see from the outside, from the inside, is the, displacing his tongue, pushing towards the tongue, towards the back, slowly suffocating his life away. 
What that means is, it's like turning off your oxygen supply from the air over four to five years period, slow and lingering death. How about Kaplik and Pilot? I'm sure we have heard, uh, I've seen a lot of these pictures in, on the telly, but in some villages, believe it or not, some remote villages in West Africa, the voodoo doctors say, that baby is the devil's baby. Let's bury it alive. Let's celebrate this burial. Ladies and gentlemen, I've got some pictures I couldn't show you because we have got young audience here. You know, vaccination, we take it for granted in the West. Out there, measles kills, but some strong ones, they survived measles, but their immune system was rock bottom. And just a simple dental or gum infection, that infection become fresh and bone-eating infection. That's why I can't show you those pictures. And do you know, the sad thing is the World Health Organization said if one child with that condition called Norma is safe, nine already died. I'm a dentist, a doctor and a surgeon, all put in one. I'd like to tell you about dental infection. Dental infection, untreated, without antibiotics, can spread towards the neck, the abscess, and eventually choke the patient's life away. A few years ago, I saw a patient who had infection of the teeth of the upper jaw, and he, he kept losing his teeth. But when he came to see me a few years ago, he took his upper jaw out to show me. So all these 7,000 people are waiting. What are they waiting for? They're waiting for a solution. They're waiting for a boat. It was actually a ship, to be precise. It's a hospital ship. This hospital ship has equipped with five operating theatres, modern operating theatres, with 80 inpatient beds, three ITV beds, with pharmacy, laboratory, now we've got a blood bank. I'd like to share with you some of those patients who you've just seen. The goiter patient, now she's well, but with no evil spirit. The benign jaw tumor. He can smile again, but oh no, not just that. He can chill, he can talk, he can sing, he can swallow without worrying of choking himself. The cleft lip and pilot patients. Some of these young patients don't even know what happened to them, but their parents do. Because their parents, hope and dream, have now re realized because they, their child is not going to be teased. Not, they, the child will be able to find a job, maybe get married one day. The hope and dream has come back. This is a very rare picture of the same patient 16 years after the reconstructive surgery. Let me tell you about the healing process. The healing process starts when the patient came to either screening or to, onto the ship. It started with one of the volunteer crew members actually went up and shake the patient's hand because that, the healing starts with human contact and human acceptance because they start where they are. Because don't forget, these patients have, have been ostracized. One patient actually said to me, I haven't seen a doctor for the last 20 to 30 years. Every patient came to the ship, they would have a wash bag because they have nothing to bring with them. In the wash bag, there's a mirror. And they would look at the mirror when they wake up from anesthetic. And you can imagine some of those patients with big jaw tumors, and they will be looking at the mirror and feeling. Because this tumor has been with them for such a long time. They couldn't believe that after a kip, maybe six to seven hours for them is just like a nap or kip, and it's gone. And they look at the mirror, look at themselves in the mirror, and they couldn't believe who's looking back at them. So the society is going to look at them differently. I also saw a cleft lip and palate 
lady who must be over 60 years old. When I look at her, she never stare at my eyes. She only look at my neck or my chest. Why? Because she's so downcast, because she has been rejected and ridiculed by her own family and her community. But over the days after surgery, wow, you see her start to lift her head up. She start to make eye contact. She start to smile. You can see she's going to have a new life, new lease of life ahead of her. For hope to be believable and credible in the future, it needs to be tangible and felt in the present. And mercy ship can bring this because patients can feel, patients can see with their own eyes that the deformity, the tumor is removed. They can dare to hope again for a brighter and new future. Let me tell you more about this hospital ship, Africa Mercy. It's the biggest non-governmental hospital ship in the world. It used to be a Danish rail ferry. And you know, it is being converted into a hospital ship in this very land, in Newcastle Dockyard. And I'm so proud to be a Brit. <laughs> it's not just it being converted here. It's because when you have electrical appliances, you don't need to find adapters because all the wall sockets are British. <laughs> Africa Mercy. It's a 16 and a half thousand ton ship. Let me tell you more about this ship. On this ship, there's a library on your left, left image. There's a library, there's a gym, uh, there's a doctor's and dental clinic, um, a kitchen, a laundry, a school for primary and secondary pupils, uh, a gym, internet cafe, and also a large canteen as on the right side of the screen. And if you put a golden M on it, it will be a McDonald's. <laughs> but ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, more importantly, it even have a Starbucks. <laughs> it's a cool ship. It's really cool. It's so cool that I bought my family on holiday on the ship. You can see Hilary, my wife, and our two daughters, Kat and Zoe. Well, Hilary is a ward pastor. As you can see here, I'm explaining uh, to the patient, because Hilary also speaks French. We, we, we were in a French-speaking country, and Hilary was explaining to her, and Kat was, uh, is a healthcare assistant looking after the patient. But you say, where is Zoe? Where is Zoe? Zoe's only 19 years old. She hasn't got any professional qualification or any training. What can she do to help? Well, in her gap year, she went to the ship. She just came back not long ago, and she helped in the kitchen. She made pizzas, chopped uh, uh, cheese and uh, tomatoes and cucumbers and all that, and she even made 700 pancakes a morning. <laughs> Amazing. So anyone could help or serve on the ship. And by the way, they are here in the arena. If you want to know more about the Mercy ship, please come and talk to them. Right now, the ship is surfing in Point Noir. It's at the bottom left of the map in Congo Republic. It's serving there with 450 volunteer crew members. I'd like to share with you about people on the ship. Tim, our captain, the surgeon, the dentist, the hygienist, the nurse, the electrician, the engineer, the plumber, the cleaning staff, all of us serving on the ship as volunteers. And I'd like to introduce you to this gentleman. Dr. Gary Parker is our chief medical officer and maxillofacial surgeon. 
And he's there on the ship, saving and changing lives while we speak. But the amazing thing is this. He and his family, that's a, do- a wife and two children, they have been serving on the ship for 28 years without salary or pension. Yes, Mercy Ship's amazing. It's got an amazing business model. I'd like to challenge any CEO here to do the same. It's to charge a crew member for the privilege to serve. Indeed, we all have to pay for our own accommodation and the flight to the ship. And that means all the donations will go to patient care and maintenance of the ship. How did the story begin? It began with this gentleman, Don Stephen. He was a young businessman in 1978. He was caught in a horrendous hurricane in one of the Caribbean islands. It was the hospital, the building was being blown over, people were injured, deaths, and he was hiding in the shelter, and the little Caribbean girl next to, her, next to him was praying, praying to God, and asking God to bring a hospital ship with supplies so that the villages can be rebuilt and the hospital can help the injured. That started the vision of the hospital ships, to bring hope and healing to the forgotten poor. We all have heard of the story of the Good Samaritan. The Good Samaritan saw the injured man on the other side of the road. We can all have emotion for the injured man. But it's not compassion until you're willing to cross the road. Samaritan had compassion, he went. So compassion always followed by action, always. So ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I urge you to turn your emotion into compassion. 